This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Henry Ford famously said, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. I already know you can fix this transmission. It's just a matter of learning the steps you need to take in order to do it. Welcome back to class. This is Ford E4OD 4R100 class, lesson one. The goals of this lesson are, first of all, to discuss the transmission's identity, application, and variations over the years. Next, I'll introduce you to a practical work area. After that, we'll take a look at the tools you'll need. Of course, you'll need a rebuilding kit as well as a few other parts, so I'll talk about those items too. Finally, we'll go over the precautions and equipment needed to safely work on this transmission. You can easily recognize an E4OD 4R100 by its conspicuous size. It's a monster compared to the smaller, lighter duty 4R70W series transmission. Another way to positively identify it is to look for the long, rectangular shaped pan which needs 20 bolts to fasten it to the case. The E4OD was produced from 1989 until 1998. It was used in E-series vans, F-series trucks, Broncos, and the Expedition. In 1999, a few internal changes were made and Ford renamed it 4R100. The automaker continued to use it in not only the before mentioned vehicles, but also the new for 2000 Excursion. It was produced until 2005. A few words of caution. This class does not apply to the similar looking 2003 and later 5R110 torque shift transmission model used in this list of vehicles. Even though the pan looks the same, the 5R110 transmission is considerably different internally. Once again, you cannot use the E4OD 4R100 classroom lessons in order to work on a 5R110 torque shift transmission. Moving on, I have a few suggestions about an ideal work area arrangement which will help you work comfortably, orderly, and safely. Consider copying this layout. I have the transmission for disassembly on one bench. Make sure that it is sturdy enough to handle the weight of this unusually large machine. I use another two and a half by four foot bench for placing parts and sub-assemblies on as I remove them from the case. I placed white poster board on it in order to make it easier for you to clearly see the parts. I'll also use a homemade wooden stand to support the case in an upright position as I work on the main drivetrain. I'll show you how to easily make it from two befores later. In order for you to see how the benches and stand work together, I'll flash forward for a moment so you can see how my work area will look after the transmission has been partially disassembled. This is how my benches will look after the transmission has been taken apart. As you can see, nothing remains in the case which is supported by the stand. Parts and sub-assemblies have been placed neatly onto the other bench where they can remain organized and undisturbed. The pump, clutch packs, drums, gear sets, and other drivetrain parts have been arranged in a pattern which loosely mimics how they go together. The valve body area components have been placed into the bottom pan. 
Small boxes are used to separate and organize small parts such as bolts, check balls, and other small pieces. Now let's take a look at the tools we'll need for this project. You don't need a lot of hard to find or expensive tools to work on this transmission. Sure, there are tools specifically designed for working on transmissions, and while they're nice to have, they're not absolutely necessary. Here are the only hand tools you really need. Various screwdrivers, a hammer, even a claw hammer will work fine. One half, three eighths and quarter inch drive ratchets, extensions, eight, 10 and 13 millimeter three eighths drive sockets, 13 millimeter and seven eighths half inch drive sockets, a T30 Torx bit socket, half and seven eighths inch open end wrenches, feeler gauge set, common snap ring pliers, and mechanics pick. A magnetic pickup tool will come in handy. The most exotic hand tool required is an inch pounds torque wrench. We will not be using any power tools such as air ratchets or impact guns. A source of compressed air is needed in order to blow dry parts and to perform pressure tests on clutch packs. If access to an air compressor is beyond your means, a simple air tank, adjustable regulator, along with a rubber tip blowgun like this setup will do the job. This is a tool unique to the transmission repair industry. It's called a foot press and it is used to compress return spring cages in the clutch drums in order to remove snap rings. I don't expect you to have access to one, but you will need a similar tool. There are two clutch drums in the E4OD 4R100 which require spring cages to be compressed. I'll show you how it works and then we'll discuss a much less expensive device. For example, I'll place an assembly called the direct clutch drum onto the press Adjust the circular feet to fit the diameter of the spring retainer. Insert this pin into the appropriate hole for height adjustment. And finally, push a lever down with my foot to compress the spring cage. Now the retaining snap ring can be removed. Lifting my foot releases the tension, allowing the return springs to expand. Now let's look at an alternative. There are various relatively inexpensive tabletop devices which will work fine. This tool, made by KD Tools, is available through many parts stores and online. I use this type of spring compressor for many years. Here's an easy to make tool you will need, not only to remove the front pump from the case, but also for removing and reinstalling the overdrive piston housing too. It's made from pieces of one inch square tubing, threaded rods and nuts from the hardware store. Like the wooden stand, I'll give you the dimensions and show you how to make it later. You'll need a device like this during reassembly of the pump. It's a band type clamp which is used to align the halves of the pump before you bolt them together. This clamp cost me over $50 25 years ago. You can accomplish the same thing with two 7-inch worm clamps from Lowe's.
I have an assortment of drivers for removing and installing bushings. You can accomplish the same with large sockets and extensions or even an old engine valve. At some point after teardown, you will need to clean everything and I want to spend a little time explaining how to do this without damage to parts or personal injury. My best tip is this. Don't clean anything until the transmission is disassembled. In other words, regardless of how grimy and nasty the transmission is after removal from the vehicle, avoid the temptation to blast it with a pressure washer or to take it to the car wash. High pressure water and detergent can and usually will be injected past the seals of electrical components such as the range selector switch and sensors. Oxidation can be a problem too. Water on the surface of the pump stator support, input shaft, and other bare steel parts will quickly cause rust. All of the internal parts and any electrical components should only be cleaned with a petroleum-based product such as mineral spirits after disassembly. Only the bare, empty aluminum case, extension housing, and galvanized steel pan can be cleaned with water and detergent. I use a small tank like this one with about a half a gallon of mineral spirits, sometimes labeled paint thinner, along with a stiff bristle brush to clean internal and electrical parts. Gasoline, kerosene, paint reducer, and other products such as acetone or alcohol should never be used. They're either too harsh or too flammable. I always wear gloves to protect my hands from chemicals and safety glasses to protect my eyes from splashes. As a side note, I also keep a pad and pen handy for making notes about parts as I inspect and clean them. I mentioned before, the E4 d 4100 is considerably bigger than the smaller, lighter duty 4R70W. In a similar way, the cost to rebuild it is somewhat higher too. In order to thoroughly assemble this transmission to like new condition, you will need to commit to buying the following items. First, you'll need a rebuilding kit. I highly recommend the Deluxe Super Kit available at the transmissionbench.com store. It's a fundamental minimum package of replacement parts, but not necessarily every part you will need in order to overhaul this transmission. There are two kits to choose from depending upon the vehicle model year. The 1996 to 2005 kit seen here, for example, contains the following. A master overhaul kit, superior shift correction kit, intermediate heavy duty sprag assembly, a Sonax brand replacement snap ring for the overdrive piston, as well as pump, sun gear, and extension housing bushings, and two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive type filters. You'll also get a new intermediate band, intermediate servo assembly, and bonded piston set. Let's take a closer look. The master overhaul portion of the Deluxe Super Kit contains all of the O-rings, D-rings, metal clad seals, lip seals, paper gaskets, ceiling rings, as well as an assortment of other small parts such as small filters, ceiling washers, and even new check balls. Many of the parts are thoughtfully sub-packaged and labeled for easy identification. You also get data sheets with extremely useful information such as updates, bolt torque specifications, and even check ball locations.
Hablaya Spinola. The same information is in Spanish on the back of each page. The Master Overhaul Kit portion also includes all of the friction and steel plates used in the various clutch drums. The Superior Brand Shift Correction Kit is a very important part of the kit and our project. I personally cannot imagine rebuilding this transmission without using this product. Let's take a look at what's in it. Along with detailed instructions, you get first of all, a new booster valve and sleeve assembly for the pressure regulator bore. This is a part known to wear badly and should always be replaced. A new pressure regulator spring is also included. There is an assortment of accumulator springs which you can optionally install for firmer shifts. Especially important is a replacement drain back valve which goes into the stator support of the pump. An assortment of small drill bits is supplied to modify the various passages in the pump. Again, I always install this kit into every E4OD 4R100 I work on, and I recommend that you should too. Both two and four wheel drive type filters are in the kit. It can be confusing to know which one to purchase since even some two wheel drive versions actually have a deep pan requiring a four wheel drive type filter. The kit comes with both. A new intermediate band and new intermediate servo assembly are a part of this kit. Finally, in this particular kit, a full set of bonded rubber on steel pistons are included. Four replacement bushings come in this kit. The pump, extension housing, and the two bushings in the sun gear are the ones which you most likely, but not necessarily, may find to be worn. They're in the kit if you need them. The intermediate sprag assembly should never be reused. You get a new one. Finally, the kit includes a unique solution to an old persistent problem in this transmission. You get a Sonex brand spiral type replacement snap ring for the overdrive clutch piston return spring. The original type snap ring just will not stay in its groove in the housing. This new part permanently fixes the problem. The Deluxe Super Kit is a great foundation of replacement parts for rebuilding this transmission, but you will need something else to complete the recipe. Electronics. All five solenoids which control this transmission are contained inside one large housing. It's called the solenoid pack and it should always be replaced. There are three different ones to choose from depending upon the transmission model year and if you have a gas or diesel engine. I strongly encourage you to buy a new one, but if you are on a limited budget, remanufactured ones are available at a lower cost. The Deluxe Super Kit along with a new solenoid pack will cover the basic ingredients you'll need for a light new E4OD 4R100. But if you want to go to another performance level, there is one more product you may want. If you want to reach for the highest performance level possible with this transmission, this is the kit to get you there. This is the Transgo HP2 Tugger reprogramming kit. It contains parts and instructions for modifying not only the valve body, but also other areas of the transmission drivetrain too. The result is a very fast and extremely firm shifting transmission with a lot more manual control. We will thoroughly cover the installation of this kit during this video classroom. 
It's also available from the transmissionbench.com store. One last point in this lesson and the most important one of the entire project, work safely. Protect yourself from injury. Transmission repair can be hazardous. First of all, make sure your work surface can support the weight of the E4OD 4R100. This is a heavy transmission. It also has razor sharp edges in the valve body area and other sections of the case. Have suitable mechanics or thick leather gloves close by to protect your hands, fingers, and wrists from laceration. Finally, remember to wear eye protection. Starting with the next lesson, you will be required to wear safety glasses for the rest of this video classroom project. That's it for lesson one. Join me in lesson two and we'll begin the disassembly.